A Bill Collector Guide Chapter 1 Bill Collectors Slash Debt Collectors The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act Slash FTPA. If you use credit cards, owe money on a personal loan or are paying on a home mortgage, you are a debtor. If you fall behind in repaying your creditors or an error is made on your accounts, you may be contacted by a debt collector. You should know that in either situation the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act requires that debt collectors treat you fairly by prohibiting certain methods of debt collection. Of course, the law does not forgive any legitimate debt you owe. A debt collector is any person, other than the creditor, who regularly collects debts owed to others. Under a 1986 amendment to the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, this includes attorneys who collect debts on a regular basis. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act applies to all debt collectors including credit cards, car loans, and mortgages. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act FTPA, only applies to the collection of debts that are personal, family or household in nature. It does not apply to business debts. If debt collectors violate the provisions of the FTPA, civil liability and monetary fines could be levied on them by the Federal Trade Commission. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act slash FTPA was passed to protect consumers from unscrupulous collection agencies. It doesn't protect you from the actions of the collection department of the bank or the credit card company, only from a third-party bill collecting company hired by the creditor to collect money on their behalf. Collectors cannot phone your home so many times that they harass you. They cannot call before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. They cannot threaten you or use obscene language. They cannot call you directly if you tell them you are being represented by an attorney. They cannot call you at work if you tell them your boss forbids personal phone calls. They cannot call anyone other than you and reveal your financial situation to them unless they're telling your lawyer about the case. The basic rules are that debt collectors may not use threats of violence or harm. Publish a list of consumers who refuse to pay their debts, except to a credit bureau. Use obscene or profane language, or repeatedly use the telephone to annoy someone. Debt collectors may not use any false or misleading statements when collecting a debt such as falsely imply that they are attorneys or government representatives, falsely imply that a Debtor has committed a crime. Falsely represent that they operate or work for a credit bureau. Misrepresent the amount of a debt, or indicate that papers being sent to a debtor are legal forms when they are not. State that papers being sent to a debtor are not legal forms when they are. Use any business, company, or organization name other than the true name of the debt collector's business, company or organization. Debt collectors also may not state that. A debtor will be arrested if he or she does not pay a debt. They will seize, garnish, attach or sell a property or wages, unless the collection agency or creditor intends to do so, and it is legal to do so. Or actions, such as a lawsuit, will be taken against a debtor, when such action legally may not be taken or when they do not intend to take such action. Debt collectors may not. Give false credit information about a debtor to anyone, including a credit bureau. Send you anything that looks like an official document from a court or government agency. When it is not, or use a false name. Debt collectors may not engage in unfair practices when they try to collect a debt such as Collect any amount greater than a debt, unless your state law permits such a charge. Deposit a post-dated check prematurely. Use deception to make a debtor accept collect calls or pay for telegrams. Take or threaten to take a debtor's property unless this can be done legally. Or contact a debtor by postcard. This law prohibits a number of practices that were previously standard in the debt collection business, such as They can't contact you at unreasonable times, generally before 8 a.m. Or after 9 p.m. Or at work. They can't contact you after you write the collection agency telling them to stop except to notify you of any specific legal action. They can't contact your friends, relatives, employers, or others except to find out where you live and work. They can't tell such people that you owe money. They can't harass you with threats of harm, obscene language, or repeated phone calls. 
They can't make any false statements such as threats of arrest. They can't threaten to garnish your wages and sue unless it's legal to do so and they intend to do it. They can't pretend to represent any legal arm of the government. Engage in any manner of misrepresentation. Try to humiliate the debtor in any way, for example, parking in front of the house in a car with a sign on it stating, Debt Collector. They can't demand payment over and above what is actually owed. They can't institute legal proceedings against the debtor in a jurisdiction other than where the debtor lives. You may stop a collector from contacting you by writing a letter to the collection agency telling them to stop. Once the agency receives your letter, they may not contact you again except to say there will be no further contact. Another exception is that the agency may notify you if the debt collector or the creditor intends to take some specific action. You can legally break off the relationship with a creditor by informing him or her in writing that you have turned the matter over to an attorney. After that, the collection agency has no legal right to contact you directly except in a court of law. If they persist, you can complain to the usual channels, i.e., the state attorney, consumer protection agency, Federal Trade Commission and you have the right to file suit against them. If you have an attorney, the debt collector may not contact anyone other than your attorney. If you do not have an attorney, a collector may contact other people but only to find out where you live and work. Collectors usually are prohibited from contacting such permissible third parties more than once. In most cases, the collector is not permitted to tell anyone other than you and your attorney that you owe money. Within five days after you are first contacted, the collector must send you a written notice telling you the amount of money you owe, the name of the creditor to whom you owe the money and what action to take if you believe you do not owe the money. A collector may not contact you if, within 30 days after you are first contacted, you send the collection agency a letter stating you do not owe money, however, a collector can renew collection activities if you are sent proof of the debt such as a copy of a bill for the amount owed. If you owe more than one debt, any payment you make must be applied to the debt you indicate. A debt collector may not apply a payment to any debt you believe you do not owe. You have the right to sue a collector in a state or federal court within one year from the date you believe the law was violated. If you win, you may recover money for the damages you suffered. Court costs and attorney's fees also can be recovered. A group of people also may sue a debt collector and recover money for damages up to $500,000 or 1% of the collector's net worth whichever is less. Report any problems you have with a debt collector to your state attorney general's office and the Federal Trade Commission. Many states also have their own debt collection laws and your attorney general's office can help you determine your rights. Include as many details as possible. If you have questions about the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act or your rights under the Act, write Federal Trade Commission Consumer Response Center Number 130A 600 Pennsylvania Avenue N.W. Washington, D.C. 20580 FTC.gov The FTC enforces a number of federal laws involving consumer credit, including the Equal Credit Opportunity Act The Fair Credit Reporting Act The Truth in Lending Act The Fair Credit Billing Act The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act The FTC also provides free brochures explaining these laws. Write them for free publications like Building a Better Credit Record, Women and Credit Histories and Credit Billing Blues. Although the Commission cannot solve individual problems for consumers, it can act when it sees a pattern of possible law violations develop so contact them if you have a complaint. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act is located at 15 U.S.C. 1692, FTPA 1692. FTPA websites. FTC.gov slash OS slash statutes slash FDCPA slash FDCPAC.htm comma the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. PrivacyRights.org slash FS slash FS27 hyphen debt call dot HDM comma debt collection practices, fact sheet that explains the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Credit.com slash credit underscore information slash credit underscore law slash understanding hyphen your hyphen debt hyphen collection hyphen rights dot JSP. What debt collectors don't want you to know.
Collection agencies try to intimidate ignorant people into paying their debts because they only get paid if they collect. The truth is that legally, bill collectors can do very little to get you to pay a debt. Quite often, they cross the line and do illegal things like lie and hassle people to try to get them to pay. If a collection agency violates the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, you can sue the agency and collect for damages and you can use their violation as your defense if they take legal action against you. Try to get a copy of this law at your local library. If they try to impersonate a law enforcement official or a government agent and act like they're serving you with court papers, they're committing a crime and you can sue them. If you owe money to a bank or other financial institution, they may send you a few letters and call you up a few times and if you don't pay the bill, they will turn it over to a collection agency who will get about 30% of whatever they can recover out of you. Even though collection agencies like to pretend to have lots of power in order to intimidate you, the truth is that you have the power. They have stringent rules they must follow and if they violate them, you can either charge them civilly for damages or even criminally if they threaten you. Debt collection is a civil manner. The police don't get involved unless it's to collect a judgment in civil court. Creditors can't take property from you unless first cleared by a court. The only times you can be charged criminally is if you default on certain payments like child support or alimony and if you commit fraud like lie on a loan application or pass worthless checks. Keep a record of everything you pay so they don't try to rip you off and say you owe more than you actually do. A creditor or agency can write letters to you, call you once a day in quest of a payment and even knock on your door to ask about a payment but he is forbidden by law to harass you or invade your privacy or use deceptive means to get you to pay your bills. He cannot use foul and abusive language over the telephone, tell anyone besides you the reason for his phone call inconvenience you or in any way threaten your job or your reputation in the neighborhood where you live. The way it works is that your creditor could hire a collection agency to try to collect from you on a percentage commission basis in which case, since they're hired guns, they can't take legal action against you. The worst they can do is report you to a credit reporting agency where the bad debt will stay on your record for seven years although some information stays on your credit report forever as in the case of large loans like mortgages. Your creditor could also sell your account to the collection agency for a discount fee in which case they own it and they can take legal action against you like sue you in civil court to collect. If a debt collector cooperates with you, you should be able to negotiate a paying scheme where you will pay off a reduced amount of debt to clear the bill. If you do pay it off, make sure any negative references on your credit reports are taken off. Barring that, you will end up in civil court where you might get a judgment rendered against you and if you own anything of value like a house, they will put a lien on it with interest so that when you sell it, your debt plus interest will be paid to the creditor. If you don't go to your hearing, they will find you guilty in absentia. They're sneaky with the liens. They will slap one on you without you even knowing it. They take advantage of the ignorance of most people regarding the law. You can either default on the debt and have bad credit or declare bankruptcy. Your action against bill collectors. Some things the collector or creditor are not allowed to do are as follows. Threaten to issue an arrest warrant for you to the police. Can't have you arrested for a debt unless you committed fraud to get the money. Cannot threaten you with anything he or she knows they cannot legally do. Cannot leave threats on an answering machine such that other people could conceivably hear it. Cannot imply that the debtor is under some legal duty to call the collector back. The debtor does not have to return a collector's phone calls. Cannot make idle threats just to scare the debtor. Cannot harass or threaten harassment. Laws are different for a collection agency which is a second intermediate party and a creditor who you owe money to directly. By simply writing a letter to a collection agency and requesting that they stop harassing you, they must stop but a creditor can legally keep hassling you within reason. If a collector is harassing you, contact your local consumer protection office, state attorney's office, the legal department of the collection office and the legal offices of your major creditors. You can sue your bill collector in civil court for harassment but it's better to write a letter telling him to leave you alone say something like. Under provision 15 of the U.S. Code 1692C, this letter is my formal notice that you stop all communication with me except as prescribed by federal law. 
you have to keep all evidence of harassment in case you file a civil lawsuit against the bill collector. If he persists, file a complaint with the FTC, ftc.gov. Contact your local Attorney General and Consumer Protection Office. Contact the American Collectors Association. Once you dispute the bill, the collector has to legally stop trying to collect from you until he proves your debt. That means no phone calls, no nasty visits, etc. He has to inform anyone that he's told about your debt like a credit reporting agency that you're disputing it. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act slash FTPA gives you the right to sue debt collectors who unlawfully harass you or threaten you with lies and otherwise berate you. They can lie about a lot of things to try to scare you and intimidate you into paying your debt. If you're serious about protecting yourself, you'll record all their phone calls then look though the FTPA to see where they're lying. You have the evidence on tape so it's easy to file a civil lawsuit from there. They lie like crazy threatening to sue you, add fees onto your debt, have you arrested for fraud, etc. If you tape them saying it over the phone or save the emails and letters they send you, it will be no sweat to prove your case that they harassed you contrary to the provisions of the FTPA. The FTPA standard is the least sophisticated consumer standard which is would anyone believe what the bill collector threatened you with. Every time a bill collector contacts you by letter or phone, he or she must, by law, identify themselves in this general manner. Hello, I am, name, a debt collector representing, creditor, working for Company X. Information obtained during the course of this call will be used for the purpose of collecting the debt. If the bill collector doesn't say this to you, he's violating the FTPA. No bill collector or creditor has the right to contact any third person about your debt to him or her except to get information solely to locate you. If a bill collector or a creditor tells anyone else that you owe them money, that's an invasion of privacy and grounds for a lawsuit. The FTPA states that without the prior consent of the consumer given directly to the debt collector or the express permission of a court of competent jurisdiction, a debt collector may not communicate with a consumer in connection with the collection of any debt. Tell the bill collector not to call you at work in a letter then when he does, make notes about it to give to your lawyer when you sue him. You don't have to talk to a bill collector but if you do, you have to be truthful about your personal and financial affairs but you don't have to disclose private information about your financial affairs. All states have a statute of limitations on debt collecting. Very few are over six years. If you talk to a bill collector O&M the phone and simply admit that you owe money on an old debt, by admitting to it, you could be giving the bill collector the legal right to chase after you for longer than the current statute of limitations so don't say much on the phone. Let the bill collector do all the talking. If you send a bill collector a cease communication letter, document it by sending it by certified mail. Keep a copy. After the collector receives your letter, they can only contact you to either inform you of any legal action they plan to take or to tell you that they're discharging the debt. Read the FTPA for yourself, write down any points where you feel your rights were violated, go see a debt lawyer and ask him or her if you have a lawsuit worth pursuing. You have to state how the bill collector's actions damaged you. Did they cause you stress, make you sick, depressed, embarrass you in front of others, etc.? You can win statutory damages and lawyer fees just by proving the bill collector broke the law but beyond that if you can prove he contributed to a medical condition, mental illness, embarrassment, loss of a job, etc., you could win more money. You can file a civil lawsuit in small claims court, civil court, or federal, court, U.S. District Court. In some states, state law goes even further than the FTPA in protecting the debtor. FTC.gov, Federal Trade Commission Publications. For more information or to contact a debt collector educationcenter2000.com, articles about debtors' rights and in fraudulent debt collection practices. American Collectors Association. POB 39106. Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55439. 612 926. 6547. Collector.com. Contact them if a collector is harassing you. Debt arbitration slash debt settlement slash avoid bankruptcy.
Debt arbitrators collect money owed to a business owner for a fee by contacting the debtor and offering them a deal like pay 50% and the debt is considered paid in full. In return for paying the debt, the person or company saves their credit report from getting a black mark. Some debt arbitrators go through a charade of having a hearing where both sides have their say but the bottom line is that they are agents for the company owed money and want to collect at least part of it. Their leverage is to save the payer's credit record. If you owe money to someone and they hire a debt arbitrator to try to collect some of it, you can either make a deal to pay them something or they'll report your debt as a delinquent debt to the CRAs. If you owe someone money, make a pitch to them that you are willing to pay 40% of it if they're willing to mark it as paid in full in order to preserve your credit record. 4paydebt.com slash debt hyphen arbitration dot php adatoday.com, American Debt Arbitration ConsumerDebtGroup.com ConsumerDebtRelief.com DEBT-GONE.com slash Arbitron.htm DebtRegret.com slash Arbitration.html DebtRupsi.com DEBT-SETTLEMENT-INC.com DebtSource.com EN.Wikipedia.org slash Wiki slash Debt underscore Arbitration Judgment against you. A judgment against you is a court order arising from legal action your lenders took to try to get some money back. With this judgment, a lender has the right to garnish your wages or seize some of your assets which will be sold at a public auction and the money raised will be applied towards your debt. If you have bank accounts, investment accounts, etc. in your home country as opposed to offshore, you're sunk. They'll take it to pay off the debt. They'll even go to your safety deposit box if you have one. Quite often, if you own a house and owe some money, your lenders will go to court, win a judgment against you and simply put a lien on your house such that when the house is sold, the lien must be paid plus interest before the sales contract can be valid. If you have a judgment or a lien against you, one way to finagle out of it is to approach the lender and ask to make a deal like 50% of it now in return for wiping it out. Some creditors will go for it to simplify their lives. Money in the hand is worth more than money promised 10 years from now. If you settle a judgment, get the lender to file the paperwork in court to satisfy the judgment. This is called either a satisfaction of judgment or discharge. Once the lender gets the money, he doesn't particularly care about clearing your name. You have to be clear. You get a contract and the discharge papers and you pay but you refuse to pay until you get those papers. You have to be firm about getting those papers in order to try to restore your credit record. If you own almost nothing or were smart enough to either have relatives own everything you own for legal purposes or put your money in an account in the Isle of Man or Panama, you can smile smugly, hold up your dirty sneakers and your old used car and ask them if they want them. It's all you own. The poorer you look on face, the less creditors will bother trying to get judgments against you. They can easily do computer checks. If you come up as owning no real estate, no boats, big cars, etc. And having very little money in bank accounts, you can beat them. If you can buy a house in someone else's or a company name, LLC, and bury some cash, the only way they can catch you is if they stick a private eye on you to follow you around. Even then, I've known people who were so private, nobody could find where they lived. Credit Card Debt Statute of Limitations by State Check out your state's statute of limitations on debt collection. Every state has a statute of limitations for credit card debt and other types of debt that starts on the date you failed to make a payment on it and never paid anything since. This means that after that time period passes, the debt is dead. You don't owe it anymore. If it's on your CR, send the CRA a copy of the state statute and tell them to remove the debt. Remember, the time period starts as soon as you stop paying on it. If you pay anything on it, the time period goes back to zero. FAIR-DEBTCOLLECTION.com slash soul hyphen by hyphen state dot html Alabama, 3 years Alaska, 6 years Arizona, 6 years. Arkansas, 3 years. California, 4 years.
Colorado, four years. Connecticut, six years. Delaware, three years. District of Columbia, three years. Florida, four years. Georgia, four years. Hawaii, six years. Idaho, four years. Illinois, five years. Indiana, six years. Iowa, five years. Kansas, three years. Kentucky, five years. Louisiana, three years. Maine, six years. Maryland, three years. Massachusetts, six years. Michigan, six years. Minnesota, six years. Mississippi, three years. Missouri, five years. Montana, five years. Nebraska, four years. Nevada, four years. New Hampshire, three years. New Jersey, six years. New Mexico, four years. New York, six years. North Carolina, three years. North Dakota, six years. Ohio, 15 years. Oklahoma, three years. Oregon, six years. Pennsylvania, six years. Rhode Island, 10 years. South Carolina, three years. South Dakota, six years. Tennessee, six years. Texas, four years. Utah, four years. Vermont, six years. Virginia, three years. Washington, three years. West Virginia, five years. Wisconsin, six years. Wyoming, eight years. Debt statute of limitations. Debt has a statute of limitations. Poorcreditgenie.com slash crs.atalim.html State, oral contracts, written contracts, promissory. Notes, open-ended accounts, credit cards. AL6663 AR5553 AK6633 AZ3663 CA2444 CO6663 CT3666 D3334 DC3333 FL4554 GA4664 High 6666